of <laughs> technology. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good evening, church. Please turn to someone very close to you, or besides you, and say you are welcome to church today. It's good to see you one more time. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We are gathering together unto him. We are gathering together unto him, unto the Lord, unto the Lord, shall the gathering of his people be. We are gathering together unto him, unto the Lord. We are gathering together unto him, unto Jesus. We are gathering together unto him, unto the Lord, unto the Lord. Shall the gathering of his people be? We are gathering together unto him. Why don't we lift up our voices and say, Father, we are gathered here tonight unto you. We have not gathered unto ourselves, but we have gathered unto you, our Father. Father, we are here because of you. We have gathered in this place of meeting because of you. For you have said that we are two or three are gathered in my name, that you are right there in the midst of them. Can we lift up our voices and say, Father, we welcome you into this meeting tonight. You are the very reason we are gathered. We have come to learn at your feet. We have come to fellowship with you. We have come, oh my Father, to fellowship one with another and to learn at your feet and to be edified by your Holy Spirit. We cannot do it without you being here. We welcome you in this meeting tonight, oh my Father. It is you that that makes a difference when we gather in this meeting. It is because we desire to hear your voice. It is because we desire to learn of you. It is because we desire to be blessed by you. That's one of the reasons that we gather. We know that when we gather, that is a corporate presence of your Holy Spirit. We do know that when we gather, that is a presence of the Godhead in our meeting. And so we gather one more time this evening. We say, my Father, come and have your way. Come and have your way in this meeting tonight. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Brethren, this is still our month of what? Blessings. Let's just lift up our voices and say, Father, we thank you for this month of blessing. I don't know whether you, have, you feel in your body, in yourself, that you have been blessed in any way. The fact that you are alive, the fact that I'm alive, is enough to give God thanks. Can we lift up our voices and say, Father, we thank you for this month of blessing, for your word that has gone forth. The word for us for this month is taken from uh, Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 26. And he said, and I will make them and the places all around my, around my hill a blessing. He said, I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. I will make them. Is the word of God. Is God has said he will make. And we can take that to the bank. And so this evening, let's just lift up our voices and say, Father, we thank you for the blessings that you have desired to release unto us in this month of blessing. We know, Lord,
Lord, that your word has gone forth. There can only be a performance of it. You are the one that watches over your word to bring it to pass. And there is a purpose for which you send your word. The Bible says that he sends his word and heal them. There is a purpose for this word of blessing. And so tonight we want to pause for a second and say, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. That is an area of need in our lives that you have sent this word into. My father, we agree with your word. We lift up our voices and say, Father, we agree with your word for blessing. We receive your word in our body. We receive your word in our spirit. We receive your word in every area of our lives that that word is targeted for. Can we lift up our voices and say, Father, I receive your word of blessing. That is a blessing blessing that you have released that is a blessing that you intend to impact our lives in one way or another we thank you for that blessing that word of blessing you have said you will make you will make them a blessing thank you for making us a blessing thank you lord for making us a blessing thank you lord for making the places round about us a blessing oh my father to you be all the glory and to you be all the honor for in jesus mighty name we have prayed you know the second part of that scripture says and i will cause showers to come down in their season and there shall be showers of blessings it's not just that he will make us a blessing he said that it shall be showers of blessings can we begin to prophesy into your life into the life of your brother by your side into every member of this church lord that we will receive showers of blessings indeed in our individual circumstances in the name of the lord jesus christ father as we stand oh my father we stand on your word of this month oh my father in ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 26 it is your word, oh my father. It is not the word of a man. He said, There shall be showers of blessings. We say, Let it be so, my father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall no we shall not only see blessing, we shall be seeing showers of blessing in every area of need, in every one that is associated with us, in everyone that is in this meeting tonight, those that are watching online, and even those that will not even join us for this meeting this evening father we are praying let there be a release of showers of blessings as you have promised oh my father it will become a reality in the life of your people lord none of your word will fall to the ground oh my father remember my father you are said in your word that you watch over your word to bring it to pass my father tonight let there be a performance of it oh my father for the very purpose for which you have released this word let it be so my father let it be so my father let it be so, my Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let there be showers of blessings, my Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So shall it be, my Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And there is another aspect of that word. He said, and the places all around my hill a blessing. Where we are is the hill of the Lord for us in this city. In, that's our place of meeting. We are just going to pray for this city, Abadidi, that God will make it a blessing also. Because we are here, that Abbasin will receive a blessing. There are people that are looking for jobs in this city. It's difficult for them to get jobs. But there will be a blessing of the Lord that will open the doors of job opportunities. Let there be a blessing of God in the area of the economy of Abadidi. Can we profess? side as you have not just remembered us as individuals you have remembered this city also this city Aberdeen my father we pray according to your word oh my father according to your word that has gone forth that you will make this place Aberdeen Aberdeen city a blessing also there is one of the places round about us you have said you will make it a blessing my father let it be so oh my father touch the economy of Aberdeen in every everywhere oh my father in the name of the lord jesus christ cause a boom in this economy in every way my father in the name of the lord jesus christ that this city Aberdeen will yield her increase indeed oh my father so shall it be so shall it be in the 
the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So shall it be in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And God is going to stop not just the economy, but the people. We're just going to pray for souls that in this city, Aberdeen, that, that the prosperity, that will be the prosperity of the word of God, that in every Shire, in every part of Aberdeen, it's not just Aberdeen, Aberdeen and Shire, indeed in Scotland, we are just going to pray, my father, that there will be a blessing of the word of God, that will be an expansion of the gospel of Jesus, that there will be, that the ground will be soft for the word of God to prosper in this city. Can we prophesy one more time to Aberdeen and say, Aberdeen, receive the word of the Lord according to the word of God that he will make this place a blessing oh my father in the spirit realm in spiritual matters let this place be a blessing indeed let this place be a place that receive the word of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ so shall it be my father that you will bless this city Lord that will rebuke every hand of the enemy every hindrance to the entrance of the word of God in this city in the life of the people we resist the hand of the enemy we say my father may your word prosper may people receive your word may the land be soft for your word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ so shall it be my father for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed you know today we have our uh, communion service you know in first in first Corinthians 11 verse 26 say do this in remembrance of me as often as you do it for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup you are announcing the lord's death until he comes again we're just going to lift up our voices that as we receive the word uh, the, the the communion service this evening let it be let it be a refreshment of our physical bodies let it be um, let it let it bring life into our bodies let it be a revival let it cause something new to happen in our lives can we just begin to pray that the pro the, the, the communion service of tonight let it have a different meaning for you for me for every single one of us that as we come to the table of the Lord this evening my father we are praying oh my father let it carry a different different significance so my father let it do something in our physical bodies let it do something in our spirit man let it do something in every way for us oh my father we receive it tonight let it be a different experience for every single one of us in the name of the lord jesus christ that my father we pray tonight oh my father that as we gather in this meeting tonight to receive the communion oh my father as we come to your table oh my father let there be an anointing of your holy spirit oh my father release in this meeting tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you my father for in jesus mighty name we have prayed let us begin to pray for the word of God that we hear tonight, that this word will be fruitful in your life and in my life and in our life. Father, we are going to pray for every word of God that will come to us tonight, that it will bear fruit in our lives, that we will receive it with faith in our heart, that we will accept it with faith in our heart. And that word, we are going to decree a decree that the enemy will not steal it from us, that it will benefit you, it will benefit me it will benefit all of us oh my father that your word which we hear tonight oh my father we are praying let it benefit us oh my father that we will hear it and we will receive it and i will accept it and i will run with it that we will receive the wisdom to know how to walk with your word in the name of the lord jesus christ that we will make our stay on your word and this word indeed which I will come tonight to oh my father every one of us will receive it and none will be left behind in the name of the lord jesus christ and finally let us say father every vessel you are going to use to speak to us tonight let them speak as oracles into your in your hands lord speak let them speak your word and not the word of a man let them decrease but your holy spirit will increase in them that they will they communicate your word oh my father may we hear your voice indeed to you be all the glory and all the honor for in jesus mighty name we have prayed one more time father we say you are welcome in this meeting tonight 
Come and have your way, my Father. Holy Spirit of God, guide us. Have absolute control of everything that will happen tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we honor you. Lord, we bless your name. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Anoint us, clothe us. Show us all blessings. Show us all blessings we need. Mercy drops on us. We plead for the showers. Let the heavens open tonight. And let it rain on us, Lord. Rain of healing, showers of blessings. Your glory and your presence, Tabernacle with us tonight. Mercy drops on us are falling. But for the showers, we plead. Our hands. Clap unto the Lord. Forever and never, my God, you are good. Forever. And never, my God, you are good forever. Forever and ever, my God, you are good forever. Forever and ever, my God, you are good forever. Forever and ever, my God, you are good forever.
are going to do something now. The brothers will sing, the sisters will sing, the children will sing, and then we will hear who is praising God the loudest tonight. Hallelujah. So we'll start with the sisters actually. You are going to sing forever and ever, my God, you are good. The brothers will respond, and then we'll hear from the children. And our praises together will rise to the Lord tonight. Sisters, are you ready? Sing forever. Brothers, are you ready forever? Forever and ever, our God, you are good. Forever, yeah. forever and ever, our God, you Brothers, are good. Brothers, forever, forever and ever, our God, you are good. Forever, forever and ever, our God, you One more time, you brothers. Are good. Forever, forever and ever. And ever, God, you, you are, are good, good forever, forever and ever. ever hey. God, Children, are you ready? Are shout hallelujah. Children in the house, shout hallelujah. For out of the mouth of babes and sucklings as he ordained praise. Yeah. Children, let's go forever, forever and ever. Oh God, you are forever. Children, children forever, children forever, forever. Everybody, forever and never, I got you out. Remember, Pastor taught us on Sunday that our praise must reach a critical mass. We must reach that critical mass before there will be, I mean, the rain can come down. So let's, saturation, thank you. A critical mass must be attained before the saturation, saturation point that will cause the cloud to return as rain. So as we are praising and worshiping, be mindful of the fact that you are loading your cloud ah. and that no one can load your cloud for you. No. It is you alone that can load your cloud by yourself. Lord, we worship you. Let our praises indeed and our worship rise to you as sweet smelling sabo. Inhabitable by you because we come through the blood of the Lamb by the spirit of holiness daily as I live often as I breathe let my whole life be a expression of your grace daily as I live often as I breathe let my whole be expressions of your grace. We cry, we cry, our Father, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name. We cry, our Father, hallowed be your name, hallowed. 
that's a covenant of blessings. And the money will not hold me. Hey, the and blood. He is my uncle. If the Lord is your uncle, I want you to sing that lesson together. Yes, you are, yes, you are. The covenant keeping Yahweh. our voices and give thanks unto this covenant keeping God the one who promises and can carry it through his power is greater than every other resisting power that's why he has spoken and he will bring it to pass that there shall be showers of blessings but we also are aware that there are many adversaries but God is able to overcome the adversary so that the door of blessing that is set before you you will enter it by covenant you shall enter we thank you, Father, tonight. We magnify your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are giving thanks. We take a prayer point there from very quickly. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. It says, and there is set before me an open door, but there are many adversaries. Please help me walk on the echo, please. You're going to lift your voices and pray. That every opposition against the blessing of God for your life shall be terminated tonight Amen. that every door that is shut against your advancement and your blessing that tonight the lord shall cause such doors to fling open in the name of jesus he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of fire and asunder tonight there shall be freedom tonight there shall be advancement you are called for something greater and that something greater you will step into i know i'm called for something greater and that something greater i will step into lift your voice and say father in the name of jesus we stand on your word and we speak by authority every hindrance every door shut against my blessing let them be open tonight Lord, cut the bars of fire asunder in the name of Jesus. Oh, press into that which is yours. We know that until we get our breakthrough, maybe we've not read the critical mass. There are more prayers to pray. There are more prayers to pray. There are more pressing in to be done. 
but the plan and the purpose of God for your life and for my life shall be fulfilled. We have been led in prayer earlier on tonight that it does not matter whether somebody is here or not tonight. We are praying for the body of Christ. We shall break through. The rain shall fall. Your blessing shall come. That which you have been beholding from afar, you will step into them. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, let it be so. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The rain shall fall. The showers of blessing shall come. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And your ground shall not be parched but shall be sowed, so that there shall be springing forth of great fruit in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Jesus, marvelous name, we are praying. If you have a believing amen to say, say it properly. And I know you is don't shout a mighty hallelujah for that as well. Tell your neighbor it is going to rain. It is raining already. It is raining all over me. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are all welcome in Jesus' name. Praise God. All right. Let's go into our study. We still have the only communion to do. So let's see how far we can go. Um, please. Uh, there are people in the house who want to jig our memory about what we learned last week. Please. Uh, yeah, quite a few hands. That's one. Sister Kochi, two. Or uh, Tunde, three. Sister Elizabeth. Let's take those three and see. Praise God. Hallelujah. Our topic last week was bless me also. Um, and um, Pastor, you, you told us, um, you took us through different slides. The first one was why. Why should we ask God to bless us also? And the first thing there, you know, that I took home was the God that bless one will bless another. Amen. And um, there was something else you said that stuck with me. Don't envy the blessings of others. Receive your own. Amen. Ask for your own. And then you talked about the three Ps on how we should obtain the blessing. Pray, provoke it, and protect it. And the... Pastor, I'll stop. After you are finished, eh? You have stopped. You finished the whole thing. You say you are stopping. All right. Okay. Well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll just talk about what me I took home. All what right. I took home is that um, no matter what I've done in the time past, I should not focus on my mistake. Though I should not focus on the person, I should focus on the blessing. Amen. I can still ask, even if I've missed it before. And then I learned something about um, Esau, that he's meant to have, he's the one that is the hunter. Blessing meets opportunity. Then I should be prepared at all times that there should be a blessing is coming. That's why. I took Hallelujah. Very well, good. Thank you. And uh, finally, thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, we also, I also learned something from the life of Esau. That we should not dissipate our energy on things that do not matter. We should stay focused on what we want, we desire, and then pray for it to happen. Um, we also learned that by uh, that day that why we should uh, we should be blessed because if we are blessed, God is glorified, and then uh, when whoever you align yourself with determines how far you can go. So we should always associate people that are blessed and we ourselves too should be blessed uh, also be a, be a blessing to other people. Thank you very much. Please put our hands together for all the wonderful contributions. May the Lord continue to make our lives be impacted by his word. In Jesus name. Well, we got quite a few things to do. We started this last week and I think we still have two, three more uh, before the end of the month. So let's just read through this one until it sticks with us. One, two, go, shall we? And we make the... I will cause showers to come down in their season. 
there shall be showers of blessing. Two more times. I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing, and I will cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessing. One more time. I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing. All right. Are you ready now to do it with that? One, two, go. It shall be getting better, okay? All right. Well done. Let's move on. Praise God. Our test for this week is Ezekiel 34, 25 to 27. So let's read that together as well before we go. Once you go, we make a covenant of peace with them. Mm -hmm. And they will dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And we made them and the places all around my hill a blessing. And I will cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessing. Then the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and the earth shall yield an increase. They shall be safe in their land, and they shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them from the hand of those who enslaved them. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. That's our test for the day. As usual, we welcome uh, contributions, uh, whatever jump that are to there that you want to share with others to bless us. You are ready? Just lift your hand. They will bring a microphone to you, please. Yes. Uh, Pastor Stanley. Thank you very much. Starting at yes, mommy. But two. Thank you very much. Um, I think I will just start from the verse uh, twenty-five, which is uh, very profound. Um, the Lord promised to bless us. But for us to enjoy the blessings of the Lord, verse 25 has to be fulfilled. There needs to be peace. The beast that is taking away the peace or disturbing the peace <coughs> needs to be tamed, needs to cease. And for us to enjoy the blessings of the Lord, we need to dwell in safety. Um, there are quite a lot of examples around the world just now. Uh, it doesn't matter the amount of money that our beloved brethren have in Ukraine and so many other areas where there is no peace to enjoy the blessings and the morning and all the affluence becomes a big challenge. So um, I believe the Lord is saying that the blessing he is promising us or giving us this month that we will have the peace and we will have the safety to enjoy them. Thank you very, very much. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm looking at verse 26, and what kind of jumped out at me is the section where he says, Around my hill, I will make them and the places all around my hill, my in capital. And I saw it as a place of positioning the people that he has decided to bless are not on a plain level I see us as exalted to a position and earmarked to say that we will be blessed but he also added that all the places around us in other words what we've been sharing before the blessings not just for us but for those around us as well. And then he goes on to say, 
Then the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. So when the showers of blessing come, then, then it's not just showers. It's for a purpose. So that the trees of the field, they will yield their fruits. Even the land will yield its increase. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Ma. Ah, we are the zone of many hands now. All right, we took just three for this first batch. And the, any more hands? All right, one, Raphaelis, two, and three. Let's take those. Uh, okay, let's take those three for now and take it from there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think for me, um, the second phrase in verse 25, and they will dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. The wilderness for me generally signifies um, a time or a period of trial, a time of hardship, struggles. But God is assuring us that even in that wilderness, he would give us peace. Um, and during that period, verse 27 talks about, to me, revealing who God is, that those maybe the situations or the environment in which we found ourselves that puts us in that wilderness, he's going to reveal himself and, of course, break the bands or the, the yokes that are around us and deliver us from those who enslaved us. So to get our blessing, there is obviously a period of wilderness that comes through and what proceeds that is the blessings from the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Good. Praise the Lord. Um, verse 25 to me is um, like a verse of a promise from God that usually the wilderness and woods are supposed to be dangerous seasons of our life, dangerous places, but that he would cause wild beasts that's devourers of our blessing, of our health and all that. He will cause them to cease from our land, from our life, so that we'll be able to dwell safely. So no matter what's happening, wars, economy and all that, that's a wilderness and wood period, but because you have a covenant of peace, with God, God will for your sake, for yourself, because of he has a personal covenant with you. Wild beasts will not come to you. So even if you're dwelling in the shadows of death, you know, as Psalm 23 says, you fear no evil because you already have a covenant of peace. Amen. Very good. First, I learned the first contribution. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Thank uh, you for that. What I want to contribute is in line with what she said. It's just like, um, there's, it's not that there's no blessing. There are blessings. But there are some wild beasts consuming them. So God is saying he's going to bring a covenant of peace that will make them to cease. This covenant of peace is something I think God had with Solomon. When Solomon said, was talking about his father that he made war and God granted him rest. That means for God to do some things in our lives, he need, like Solomon, he gave him rest so that he won't fight any war. The Bible said there was no neither uh, adversary or evil occurrence around him. So all these wild beasts, they may, they exist to eat our blessings, but God is saying he's going to seize, make them seize. So Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Right. It seems to be everybody circulating around verse 25. There's still more contribution from there. So what do you think we're going to talk about tonight? Covenant of peace. Okay. Uh, that might be another day. That is the line that we shall be focusing on tonight. Place of blessing, okay. Uh, heal of blessing. Is that heal that one? Heal, yeah, heal of blessing. Ah, I didn't receive that, so maybe I'll pray harder next time. Okay, any other one? All right, let me narrow it down for you. You have to get it now. Make me a blessing. Mm. Eh? Making a blessing. Eh? There are some serious topics coming out now. That's fine. All right. Okay. Tonight, tonight. There are three words there. Mm? Make blessing. And there's A there. If I say there are three words, make me, does that, you need to change one of the words there. 
so that we make sense. So we test your grammar now. So what will it be? So how we shall be made, you are made a blessing. And a blessing we shall be. All right, so tonight let's go. Um, I have four important statements and some blessings to make. And we will develop the latter two. Number one, a person is not really blessed until he or she becomes a blessing. A person is not really blessed until he or she becomes a blessing. I've heard so many people say many times, I mean, I don't want to be very rich. Have you heard people like that before? Uh, just give me enough. But what they are not factoring in is that they will not fulfill God's plan if God has called them to be able to be a blessing. Uh, in Genesis 12, verse 2, that was what the Lord told Abraham, our father. He said, I will bless you, and then you will be what? You will be a blessing. And the progression of God is that many of you are being called. You'll be surprised about to be anointed, to be used mightily of God. But anytime we mention the issue of you know, God will use you to be a pastor. You say, no, no, pastor, don't go there. I say, but that God is saying that I want to bless you, and then you can be a blessing. All the other people that God is using to be a blessing, is that not how it started? It has to start by God blessing you. So whenever a word comes to you, and along that line of, you will be a great event, or I just want a day job, say that. Because the only way you can actually be a blessing is that you, you must first be what? Blessed. Proverbs 27, verse 27. Verse 27, verse 27. It says, you shall have enough goat's milk for your food. That's the starting point, isn't it? Also then, for what? For the food of your... And then the nourishment of your... Many of us, we just want to have enough food for ourselves. In fact, when we say that you will have plenty, that your house will be swimming with this and that, we reject it. Don't reject it anymore. Amen. So number one and foremost, you must pursue personal blessing. I know you don't know what to do with the money yet. You know. It depends on the amount we are talking about. I've, ch I've challenged you before that if I were to give you a million, many of you know what to do with a million. I can bet it. You would not know what to do with a hundred million. I can hear you say, try me. I won't try you yet. <laughs> there are some level of blessing that we have not even fathomed yet. Amen. And so we must open our hearts. Lord, bless me as much as you want to. Then whatever you want to do with that blessing in my life, I'm ready. Because in the course of the story tonight, you will know that people are genuinely refusing this blessing for a good reason. Because of the challenges that come with blessings. And so anybody that tells you, don't give me too much money, they are just do not want, they just do not want trouble. They've seen people that have money before, and they just don't want the trouble. Lord, don't anoint me too much. They know what they are talking about. It's a matter of if I get anointed, number one, my life must be consecrated. Number two, the attack of the enemy will increase. Have you heard the saying before? Big anointing, big devil? Oh, yes. So people know what they are saying. But of course, that's not the will of God. The will of God is that you must open yourself to be blessed so that you can be a blessing. Can I have a good amen unto that one? God will help you to solve the associated problems. Ah, He will help you. But don't say, don't bless me. Oh yes, one will spend the rest of one's life not getting to where God wants you to be. But you will get there. Genesis chapter 30 verse 27. God blessed Jacob so much along the line that he promised his grandfather Abraham to the extent that even his own uncle said, boy, you carry something bigger than I ever knew. 
After all, um, Sarah and Laban, Sarah was uh, Laban's sister, wasn't it? And all of them they were related because later on we discover that even Abraham was distantly somehow related on to Sarah. In those days, consanguineous marriages were reasonably allowed, but it's not too close anyway. But the truth of the matter is, even a man that has been blessed himself from that lineage, is, he was doing well before Jacob came. He had flocks of his own. But Jacob came and he noticed that there was something different about him. And that was when we now know that Jacob has entered the realm of blessing. Point number two, very quickly because of our time. The real measure of success is how much a blessing a person is to his or our world. Amen. That is the real measure. How much of blessing. It's not how much you consume. It's how much you are able to give. And you can't give if you don't have more than enough. Because many a time, most of our struggles have mentioned to us before, when we complain, requests come from around or from abroad or from anywhere, it's because we have not got enough. Rather than complain about, Lord, why are they asking me? Why don't you say, Lord, give me more than enough that we satisfy my need and be able to give? And that has to be a change of mindset. For all of us, including myself. Because many a times, we constrict ourselves too much. So the absolute measure, or the eventual measure, is how many people are blessed through your life. That's how we know who is blessed. As chapter 10, verse 13, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yes, with Holy Ghost and uh-huh. And he went about doing what? And healing all, not so. Wow. That was anointing without measure. That was blessing overflowing. Oh Lord, my heart is crying for so tonight. You know, we made too many excuses. The time should come. When either in your spiritual life, in your material life, in your whatever you are, any need that comes away, that God allows to come your way, you will meet it. And that's what it means to be made a blessing. Stop asking, just bless me. Say, Lord, make me a blessing. And I'm desperate to be a blessing. I don't want to make excuses anymore. I don't want to freak out when people place demands on my life. Daddy used to tell us this story, Daddy Gio. He has an uncle who was very rich. And many a times when you go to him to ask for things and you start asking for a small amount, he said, go back because you, you want something big to ask from me. I think I have an idea of that man. He was a very rich Nigerian. In the, some of the old monies in that country. And so many a times when, you know, people will move children to go and ask him, you know, and the children went one day, he said, give me to the prayers was Christ. He said, ask a thousand or ask something more. The plan of God for us is that we shall get to that point where God is saying, go back and come and ask for something bigger. Through our scripture, that has been the plan. Look, Acts chapter 13, verse 36. For David, after he has served his own generation by the will of God, he did what? He did what? Served his, he served his generation. Oh, he served his generation. Uh, because it's a Bible study. He shout out, and I believe those that come for Bible study, uh, people who love the world, shout out to me some of the blessings that David was to his generation. Number one, anybody? Psalms, good. Give us the Psalms. What else? Eh? Okay, Goliath, yes. Is that, yes. Any more? What about the giants he raised? <laughs> Second Samuel chapter 23. Raised giants. What about the preparation for the building of the temple? That man was tripartitely blessed. He had stupendous riches. I think people, many people are joking with the riches of Solomon, of uh, David. Oh, David was rich. By the time he was dying, the book of 1 Chronicles, he said, all that we need, all, not some. In the day of David, uh, Moses, when they were building the tabernacle, which was smaller scale, the tabernacle was just a tent. <laughs> he asked all Israel to contribute, you remember? And they were bringing things. Ah, in the day of Solomon, the way the man left behind, we didn't hear that he asked anybody to bring gold or silver. Mm-mm. The only thing they didn't have in Israel, because their climate does not encourage that, is timber. He said, go down to Lebanon and then go and bring timber and cypress for me. Come on. And the man was deeply spiritual. He wrote Psalms, gave us some of the greatest prophecies of the coming of Christ came from him. We call them Mizani Psalms. 
The man never limited himself. He saw Goliath and said, I will take him down. Every mountain is a... He served the generation. Oh Lord, let it be said of me, I serve my generation. And I don't like question of hey, God. I just want to specialize in spiritual things. And we have a man that God has raised amongst us. Who God is allowed to be able to spread everywhere. Many, many are misunderstanding that. But that is the real blessing. Blessing is that you have everything you need. In all realms of existence. Physically, you are there. That shall be your portion. David, the Bible said concerning David, he was strong until the final time. He didn't die of any disease. He said, all day he lay down there. And the little weakness of Papa David, by that time God has cured him of it. Even they brought a little guy, the bear said, no, no, no. They said, keep him one. When there are blankets in town, it is well. But the man said, no, I've passed that one. Strong until his old days. Rich. I beg you, you will serve your generation. Amen. And from tonight, nobody, including those children, nobody will make excuses anymore. Amen. When they are talking money, you will talk. Amen. When they are talking anointing, you will talk. Amen. When they are talking intellect, you will talk. Oh, but pastor, you don't know me. You don't know how uh, 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 uh. if it is by your strength or by might, nobody will prevail. Why are you looking at yourself from the position of yourself? Why are you not looking at your position, looking at yourself from the position of God? Ah, if I stop here tonight, because I'm talking to you dry from the bottom of my heart. And I'm not talking down on you. I need all these areas of success myself. I need it. You don't need to beg anybody for anything. Not because you are self-sufficient. No, we're not talking about that. Not because you don't want to take all the glory to yourself. I have no, no, no. That's not what we're talking about. Jesus Christ had all his need met. You know how he met his need? He wanted to pay tax. He said, anointing was so much. Go and get money from a fish. He had one of the poshest tombs that anybody could get. We're talking of vaults now. And over there. He got the best vault in town. He buried him down. A part of the anointing is that anything you need, you get it how? Well, God will do that for you and I. Hey, amen. All right, where are we now? All right, let's go to number three. Um, there is a process to being a blessing. Can I hear, hear you amen onto that one? Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. There is a process. Can somebody define a process for us? You know, some of you are process engineers. Uh, don't use big time for me. Or just use lema. What is the process? Quickly, quickly. Let me get you engaged. Don't be tired of me yet. Still got a long night to go. Or ordinary times. What is the process? Or is one of those words that we know what it means, but it's difficult to, to put into. I just want to be sure. Some of you, I know you did chemical engineering, process engineering, and looking at your direction. Yes. Start you. A way to do something good. Yeah, that's a good start. Yes. Any other thought? Yes, what's the process? When I'm talking, I thought some of you will check it yourself. It's the combination this, no, of two or more procedures. Ah, all right. That looks like a technical one. Very good. A combination of two or more procedures. I call them steps to reach where you are going. A process is one step, another step, another step, and usually they add up. So the process of distillation, you have one thing that will move to another, and then you get there. All right, so, so it is with blessing. And the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. You know what God was telling him? We are going on a journey. Because in verse 2 immediately, if you just push to verse 2 for me, please take note of that. Get out of your country, your family, of, and then I'll make you a name. And then he then said, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be what? A blessing. Simply God says, we are embarking on a journey. And that's also a process. A process means that a step at a time. A step at a time. So most of the time, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 is lost on us. It's not just a matter of being a nomad. It's not just a matter of roaming. It's a matter of we are proceeding on a journey. And when you look at the life of Father Abraham, it was a journey there. 
Go to chapter 15. He said, walk before me and be that perfect. Chapter 17, walk before me and be that perfect. Part of the journey. Chapter 15, he said, you are giving me nothing. He said, go and make a sacrifice. You know, and the birds came and process one after another part of the process tested him with the titan when he made Melchizedek, it was a process by the time he was going to that he said well finally your children are going to be slaves somewhere ah, but i thought you said going to be a great, make a great nation it's a process people that will be real blessings they will start now and they will stick with it until they get to their destination i will talk a little bit more about that process later is that okay? Number four. There are tangible products to being a blessing. We will also talk about that one. So the first one, the process of being a blessing. Hallelujah. Number one, mention that in passing, you must first be blessed. Amen. Some believers seem averse to being blessed, as I mentioned to you before, yet want to be a blessing. First John chapter 1, verse 1. He said, That thing which we have heard, that thing which we have seen, that which we have touched, you don't touch it, you can't give it. It is very, very powerful. Even told them that before you go out, as chapter 1, verse 8, he said, Then you shall wait until you are, you know, um, you shall receive power. Thank you. Uh, 2448. I tried to mix them up. Uh, that's Luke 2448. So this is as well. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is what? And after that, you what? And as witnesses, what were they? They were blessings. But you must first receive power. You know how long they waited for that power? Oh, they waited. It's a process. There's no jumping it. If anybody wants to jump it, you may short change or short circuit what God has planned for them. Number two, it starts with a relationship, and we heard of that already. That's a covenant. Amen. It's a covenant. It's a relationship. And that's why he said in Romans chapter 8, verse 30 he said, Those that are predestined are also called. Those that are called are also justified, and then they are glorified. Your glorification is in when you are being a blessing to your world. John chapter 15, verse 16. Told many of you before, as far back as 1984, never dreamed that I would be a pastor. That was my call to ministry. That was my call to ministry. So you did not choose. Every morning I woke up, as we were taught in those days, so after you have prayed, kneel down, wait on the Lord to receive of him. Two main things I've shared with you that I received like that. It's an old act. Let us go back to read. After you've done your quiet time, wait on God. Don't, many things may come. But later on, you get trained. You then start knowing what is just too much of uh, food yesterday or whatever, or hunger for the morning. But you begin to, repeatedly, almost a week, the Lord gave me that verse. You have not chosen me. Uh, that's the old King James Version. But I chose you. And what? I pointed that you should go and, and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, the Father will give you. So it's a calling. We are called to be a blessing. If you are truly children of Abraham, we shall be blessings. And also, I might spend more time on this, my number three for you guys. And this is where the rubber eats the road. Uh, we've been told already before, you need to have a relationship with the law, you need to be part of the covenant, you need to be part of that heal. Many things we've said, correct. So let me move to point number three, which um, I think we have not spoken much about tonight. Part of the process is that there must be internal changes, and these internal changes are prerequisite to be a blessing. Amen? <laughs> So that is why it takes long. Everybody can wish to be a blessing, but not anybody may end up being if they don't allow God to work on these internal processes. The list is very long. I believe by the Holy Spirit, these four or so came to my heart. And I'll quickly talk through them. Wherever you are in that journey, ask the Lord to complete it for you. And if you have not started that, we start tonight. Amen. Number one, 
A person that will be a blessing must have a heart of compassion. That was what the Lord Jesus Christ had in abundance. And he saw them scattered all over like sheep without shepherd. And he was moved with compassion and he began to teach them. It was not instruction that he followed. It was not a revelation. Compassion moved him. Yes, it was. Many a times, people have refused to be blessed on their route to be the blessing because they have not developed a heart of compassion. They walk past people that are struggling. It does not touch them at all. We heard of all this. Well, of course, there's a limit to which human capacity can be so that we don't get too bogged down ourselves. But at least, we pray very well tonight, or one of the points tonight, that wars are in some places. Why am I making it too general? What about compassion in people close to you? Without compassion, it is near impossible for anybody to even come close to being used by God. Those on Colossians chapter 3, 3, verse 12, I've jumped a little bit. I know you are doing very well. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, he said that you should have your powers of mercy. Mm. Please don't walk past people. And please don't be judgmental. It's because they've not worked hard. Yes, they've not worked hard. It's because, see the way, you know, we are busy. I, I've said it before. Um, still, please have mercy on them. Are you listening to me? Please have mercy on them. Some have failed comprehensively. You have succeeded. Yeah, you worked hard. Absolutely. If you didn't work hard, you won't succeed. You work in the place of prayer, in the place of skills and everything. But many have failed due to their own error. But that does not give you the right to now not have feelings for them. There's what we call convergence of factors that make a person succeed. Convergence. Sometimes the convergence might be negative, converge, it might be negative things that converge. We've heard of he said before. Twins born of the same father, of an alcoholic father, one said, I don't drink because my father is what? An alcoholic. The other one said, I drink because what? My father is an alcoholic. But it takes a tweaking of a person's heart to be able to, you know, get there. Uh, it's a big topic for me, but before I get digressed, let me come back quickly to where we are. Do we get that very clearly, brethren? Because God does not waste his resource, amen? He won't give to people who will not care about others. Mm -hmm. Number two. You must imbibe the culture of honor. And that's a very funny one for me. When I was, because when you prepare this thing, you just write down as you believe the Lord leads you. And then you go back to it, what have I written? And that turns out to, to be even bigger than I thought. You know, a culture of honor is that there are some people who, who, who have difficulty in just honoring everybody. Do you know the Bible tells us, in, I wrote that one, it should be here. First Peter 2 verse 17. It says, honor all men. You know why we walk past, joining into compassion. You know why we walk past some people on the street? We don't have a culture of honor. Some people like that. And that's why many people, because they are children of God, God will not give them wealth because that wealth will kill them. Because that wealth will make them to be very proud. They would, but if you have developed a culture of honor, anybody you see, you defy, you honor them. We live in a world, especially the western part of the world, in which we've downplayed honor too much. And it's biting already. It's biting already. No mountain is greater than another. Everybody is a leveler. Honor people. And when honor is there, you can be sure that God will be able to help you. Because at the end of the day, God has said he will honor those who honor him. Generosity is another one. Let's look at that one. If you can take obedience... Maybe one sentence on that because I could see the time flying very quickly. Amen. Generosity. I will give that as bullet point as I go on. Generosity. Number one, 
Be generous to people. Generosity means that immediately you see people, let your default mode. Let me give you a Bible verse. Which one is that now? Let's try Proverbs 22 verse 9. Let me use that to describe that. That will make it easy for me. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. He who has a generous eye, we what? Uh For he gives of his bread to the poor. There are two types of eyes in this particular area of topic that we're talking about that human beings have. The one type of generous eye, what's the second eye? Does anybody know? Covetous eye. If you are not generous, you are covetous. Because if a covetous person is that, he wants everything for himself. Me, 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 me. And that was the problem the guy in Luke chapter 12, verse 13 to 21 ran into. That was his problem. The man that went to Jesus Christ and said, Master, there is a problem between me and my family member. We have an inheritance to share. And therefore, come and set to quarrel before us. The Lord, Lord must have looked at him with all this thing we are talking about. Even if I start to the correct, and you get the material, I know what we use it for. We know because the law concluded by saying that the, um, the life of a man does not consist, what? In the abundance of what he, eh? What he possesses. Hmm? He then concluded, he said it this way. He said, so it is with everyone that is not rich towards God. And you know, he who helps the poor, who, he, he who hates the poor, he said, it is his maker that you are working against. So, Jesus Christ was saying that this man has a covetous eye. All he sees is me, 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 grab, grab, grab. But there's another eye. It's the eye of generosity. I think the default move for people, and I will move on from this point. Please, ask questions later on because of our time. I think the default move for everybody should be, if you know you are generous, is that you need to restrain yourself from giving. If you need to be pushed to give, keep praying until you get there. That is, you need to remind yourself, be wise. Then you can know that of a truth, God has entered into your heart and you are generous. God, Lord, as it were, the Father cast away every restraint in giving his only begotten son. If you're going to be like God, you must get to that point in which your giving will begin to look foolish. Then you will now need to now balance it. But if all, the, before you give, they need to wind you, they need to beg you, they need to do special slides, they need to do, mm-mm. You have not started. You've not started. Once you start feeling in yourself that, what is wrong with me? I hope I'm okay. I hope I'm okay. Then you know that you've got a treasure in you. God needs to balance it for you. I know, I know that. I, we, the question will come about that possibly. I know that. But that should be the default mode of every believer. Generosity is not just in giving frequently, giving as required, but giving abundantly. Some people, they give and you wonder why did they bother to give. It's as if you beg them. We're having a um, fairly large team at that time. You know, we're having... Uh, team meeting in the office and that question came up. What about if somebody just gives you a pound? What should be your attitude? A pound coin. Ah, we talk about take it. The problem is not you taking it. The problem is the person giving you a pound coin when we know you can give you a five pound coin or a five pound note that will hurt them. I need to be careful with my example. There was one of our group members sometimes, and I, I think it was, it needed to be balanced, but I knew that was a generous heart. Anytime we have something that is his own turn to bring something for us to share, we bring plenty, plenty. I said, this person will go for It's not to impress. I know people do things to each other, but I have a friend like that too, very generous. You know what? Oh man, they are blessed. I have a generous friend like that. If, if you know the kind of connection that is being shared about that, you have my friend with you before. I learned so much from him. He looks forward to me. He looks up to me a lot. I said, me? Yeah, he'll be looking, looking up to you, man. And I told him, if I've used anonymously to preach many times. Ah, he's generous. It's not that he's, you no, know, he's rich, but it's not that. It's just a generous spirit. Pray for it as well. And that has opened doors for him. I'm not into politics. I'm not into all this corporate thing. No, not I me. Mean, that's not my calling. But believe you me, he has been asking me, hey, connections, 
But simply, he's just generous. Generous with his praise, generous with his giving. Let's move on. Finally, obedience. Amen. So these are the changes that must take place before, uh, so that one can be a real blessing that God wants one to be. Is that clear? Uh I don't want to make it too hard a rule. God has a final sovereignty and say, huh? And when you're talking about process, you know, I'm a man that preaches a lot of mercy and grace of God, and I will never depart from that. But there are steps that are there. God can overrule some of them temporarily. He's God. So I don't want to make too bold a statement in that one. But according to what we have seen, majority of people will have to pass through all this. And those that don't pass through it, God must have looked in this calculation that something that is making up for that one. It may be ancestral. It may be something in the future. We don't know. But I would rather you stick to all this one. Amen. Finally, God will not give blessing to you. God will not make it. A person cannot be a blessing unless you're obedient. Especially children of God. Obedience simply means that you need to follow instruction. God says, give a thousand pounds. Please don't give five or seven fifty. He said, the person actually asked me for five hundred. Just listen to God. I, I know people that have sown crazily through the years. And I follow them. Some of my harvests have not come yet. Um, in little ways, I still sow here and there. These are areas you need to give your little bit personal examples. I may have. Thank God, when I tell my wife, you know, by the grace of God, God has helped us to have seen results in previous giving. Uh, even if I were in our shoes, I would have said, Oh, God, I hope you are praying well. But God has never disappointed. Check and check with him again. But you know, obedience is important. Obedience was what said to I, Papa Abraham finally. Genesis 22, remember? Verse 1. Uh, that was the final one now. Uh, he said, he do some chicken, um, some turtle dove sacrifice. He did one. Leave your house. He left that one. God is saying, I'm still, I'm still going to catch you. Some. Not catch you, you mean what I mean. That will get there. And the ultimate. Obedience is stepwise as well. God will not ask you to do something too high for your class. So don't be afraid. Ah, this obedience that pastor is I don't think I will come for Bible study anymore. Please come. God. Because the truth of the matter is that God is a good father. No, he will not demand from you what you can't give now. I've told you, sacrifice. If you don't ask me to come into ministry. It did just something like, just didn't seem hard at that time. You know when God even wants to give you instruction and you are beloved and knows your heart, it will make you it will make some part of your brain to be suspended. So that you can do the foolish thing. Then when you've done it, then you say, What have I done? <laughs> it's part of the love of the Father. I'm encouraging you, don't be afraid of obedience. Amen. I, I say amen now. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a tough topic where we get to that one. All right. Finally, I, it's another big one that I've not mentioned. Tests and trials are built into the process. Ah, Lord, 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 Lord. Mm, see, God, more, one more slide. Do you know that? Do you agree that tests and trials are built into the process? And we say yes. That does not mean I will move on from there. <laughs> yeah, they are built into it. You'll be tested. I'll give you Abraham's example. Amen. Um, because anyway, you, all of you, in one form or another, you, you technical end of things, whether you are doing computing, after you've done all the program, you need to test it anyway, and see there are bugs in it, you need to first run it to the compiler, whatever you need to do, make sure it runs very well. You're going to push that into the market, and even, it's an ongoing thing, all your operating systems, that's why they keep sending updates, because they kept testing them. Subject them to serious, how much can they withstand, you know, uh, attack, you know, so that they're not vulnerable. You don't make a chair without surgery to test. All uh, the cars that you ride on the street. I was riding on the cobblestone one day. One younger guy was with me. He said, sir, when he drives on the cobblestone, and that's our cobblestone to the office, uh, to the church. He said, he's very careful. How does he? I said, if you know what those cars have been put through. That they will run there maybe for 12 hours on very, we shake everything, shake everything, all the boats. If you don't do that, boats will be falling out and they will be out of business. So it is for a believer. You know, you test so that they will not be tried. Yes, you test so that they will not be tempted. Yes, that's it. Or you test in preparation for temptation. That's a better way of putting it. Do you understand what I mean? 
When you have tested, it's a controlled environment. When God is tested, it's controlled. He will not allow you. say, you will not be tested about that which you are able, isn't it? Uh -huh. But when it comes to temptation, the devil tempts to destroy, isn't it? Uh -huh. But God tests to strengthen. We must be tested. Your patience must be tested. Your obedience must be tested. Your generosity must be tested. That's the only way. And uh, the Lord will help us. All right, now. Finally, finally. The products of being a blessing. Those who have been sufficiently blessed to be blessings to their generation, they have visible evidences to show for who they are. Amen. Number one point, they are loved and hated almost in equal measures. So when you see people warming up unto you and they start telling you how much a blessing you've been unto them or how much they like you, most, of, most, most likely, more likely than not, there's something in your life that you're not aware of that is blessing people. It took many people a long time to recognize that, including your humble brother standing in front of you here. It took me. People, when people are warming to you, just, yes, we talk of favor, but usually there's a part of your life that is blessing them. Maybe your gentleness, maybe your availability, maybe your frankness sometimes that you have deployed very well. But also for that same reason, there are many that will hate you. See our Lord Jesus Christ, almost in equal measure. This town was almost split into at least among the elders in those days. They wanted his neck by all means. I don't know why it is, but because blessing does not only attract people, it also replaces jealousy, jealous people. And they will do everything to bring it down. Number two, product, that is, out of that process, after you come to the place of being a blessing, be prepared that also there will be people who will love and hate. Number two, and move on, change lives and destiny. That one is very straightforward. Bread and butter stuff, we call those ones. Change lives will be there. You know, God will use to change destinies. Acts chapter 8, verses 4 to 8. Uh, Philip went to Samaria, and in verse 8, the Bible said there was what? Great joy in that city. Demons were cast out. So there will be trails of things. It might not be uh, something apparently not as spiritual as chapter 9, 36 to 42. That was the daughter, so remember her, who was just sowing things. She was a blessing. She was a blessing. Uh, to the extent that people said this woman is not dying now. Mm. And they dragged Peter. I read that account again, you know, a lot long ago. And Peter got there, he, he had to go through the same process he has seen the master to raise the dead. The Bible said he put all of them out, knelt behind, beside the bed, prayed, and then lifted her up, just as the Lord raised Tabitha, and then handed her back to them. That means evil cannot easily befall anybody that is a blessing, or let the Lord say the time is up. There's a way in which people will have your back and pray that you remain. Finally, God is always glorified through such lives. Amen? And such shall be your life and my life. Luke chapter 5, verse 26 made it very clear. He said, when they saw Jesus Christ, our Lord, doing many miracles, he said, many glorify God. Another place he said, who has given such powers unto men? Mm. Oh. When people say, thank God for your life, may you hear more of thank God for your life. Because that is what it really means to live. Praise the name of the Lord. Because of Holy Communion tonight, I need to start wrapping it up right now. It's quite obvious to you, there's so much more to say. But Holy Spirit is said, we teach you. We build it in your heart. And that which we have heard, it shall bring fruit in Jesus' name. Questions, comments? Hands are popping up already, so that's why I left that time. One, two, three. So I start with Abraji, Pastor Charles, Pastor Shola. So let's take those three quickly, please. Thank you, sir, for the teaching. Um, Abraham wanted to be a blessing to Lot, and at a point in time, he got into trouble until he was separated. So, is it possible that? Um, you are made a blessing, and in the process of being a blessing to others, you run into trouble. Yeah, correct. Um, 
Maybe you just want me to expatiate on that a little bit. That was why I said that you know you have arrived when you jump in every time. Uh, and God delivered them eventually, didn't he? So, it's nothing to be afraid of. Even when we make mistakes in such, I'd rather be like that than be the one whose balance of mass is short, who is stingy, whom they need to beg and push. Yes, it comes with challenges, absolutely. But you can be sure God will deliver. He will get us out of it. And in our time, with even greater access to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will prompt us what to do and what not to do. Even when we disobey, we should, we should not, because disobedience can be actually um, disobedience in the sincerity of your heart. Because in hearing God is not that clear all the time. You've been there before. You believe this is what the Lord is saying. Evidence here, cancel here, cancel there. And believe him is a very wrong move. Even when he was taking Lot, who knew who prevailed on him? We didn't know. Maybe somebody said, you can't leave Lot. No, man, Lot, Lot was an orphan, was he not? The father had died and took him. Whether half orphan or full orphan, we didn't know. So maybe he was under pressure. He had, he knew God, but it was a mistake that we all know eventually he made that would have cost him everything. But God delivered him. So we should not be afraid of that. Does that answer the question? And we should just be free and, and run with that. Number two, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for another wonderful section of teaching. Um, my question is, looking at Joseph when he was still in the house of Potiphar, you know, he was a servant, but he was blessed. How do we, as God's children, maybe in the journey you know, to where God is taking us to have a full assurance that despite the fact that others may look like they are ahead and all that, but we are the one carrying the blessing so that we don't start envying you know, someone that is being blessed because of you just, but at present time you are still lower. Amen. Amen. Very, very good question. Um, number one, first know what you have said. Everybody let it, let it be known now. It's quite possible, and I can repeat that anywhere, that some of you, your company is still afloat because you are there. You may not even, you may not even fathom that it's ordinary me. I have stories in this room, stories here. If I make high contact with them, some of them will know. As soon as they let their company, the company folded up. At that time, they never even knew how influential they are. Some of you think back right now and know when the hand of God has been upon you. You are thinking that eh, God quickly moved you out because they didn't want to close. No, you are the source of blessing there. And when the situation arrived, they were not fired though. It was one or two here. That was the blessing of being around people for a long time. You know people's stories. They, they decided to leave. The company went down. You are more than you think you are. Don't, don't joke with where you are. Especially if they have been oppressing you there. And the Lord is telling you to move. Many of you, you know that many times, yes, what we keep shouting about more is that and they are doing a restructure, isn't it? They say they want to sack people. They just give you a good name. And the Lord, yes, we true, we should pray. We, we should not be retrenched or whatever. We should live where we are. But that's not the most, the most important thing is that if this company, Lord, that I'm, in, that I'm a source of blessing there, I cause it to be that they stay But if you want to fold it, fold it so that I can move to another place, I can go and bless them there. We are bigger than we think. So we need to think about that constantly, sir. So there is no one, two, three, four steps of identifying it. It starts with your own consciousness. Be aware wherever you are. And that's why we must continually work with the Lord. That's about the best answer I can give. But as time goes on, God will begin to reveal it. With few, few examples I've given, that should stir our hearts to know that we are just not servants. But we are actually the one calling the shots there. Praise God. Thank you very much, sir, for the teaching. The slide on the process, and I was thinking, you said you must first be blessed and believers seems adverse being blessed yet they want to be a blessing the microphone is breaking so i'm not able to get the question fully if you can help me please you can keep talking okay. until the so the the and thank you very much sir, for this story i think the part of the my question 
this study is coming to also solve the maybe throw more light throw more light to the the question okay now when we talk of blessing the first thing that comes to our mind is monetary and you've been able to tell us tonight that it's more than just the money and it's there are spiritual blessings which are part of the blessings we receive however there could be some past conditioning if you know when we are growing up a lot of things have been told us oh those people are rich they stole the money and we've had those kind of those past conditioning that it's locked down in there a lot of things oh that person is doing great miracles is using wicked you know, evil power and now here are you you want to you want money here are you you want to manifest the power of god but past conditioning has been locked down in there that while you want to release yourself those past conditioning actually is locking you down which i think comes again under number three of your point internal changes that need to be made of past so how do we actually break loose for this past conditioning that is limiting us to manifest these blessings that god has already released upon us sir? okay amen thank you very much i mean you made it very clear it's a past conditioning so we call it reconditioning and the first point of reconditioning is that learn to speak speak you speak no evil of any man um, and I mentioned that point not too long ago, maybe in the Sunday service, where you know people making genuinely good money, and you are part of the team, part of the naysayers going around, they stole it, whatever. You don't know that people making good, genuine money, even in the most corrupt of all climates and environments. And so, don't lock yourself in the place. Just you dealt with it very well. So, the first thing that I will add onto all you have said in the recognition, number one, be aware, as you have said. Because that is a long way down the road to be aware that uh, I think I'm not sure changing myself. Some are not even aware. So anyone that has had your question tonight, you are now aware. You are halfway there. The rest of the journey is now to start the reconditioning. Because you now know what you need to drop. Now, why am I thinking like this? So that the next thing will then be a part of it is even bigger than what you have said. It's bigger than, for instance, that if you are, if you are a man of God, why should you have sufficiency in the material things? And they are, we give, we bless God for those that have gone ahead. But that was the limit of their understanding. He went to the other extreme, you know, in the apostate church, where they are even having um, um, a vow of um, a mendicant vow. That is, you vow that you'll be poor to be able to serve God. So be aware, but also this will help. There may be other things you need to do, but on top of my head, this will help. Don't be involved in speaking evil of people. Keep your, whatever you don't understand, keep your mouth shut. Somebody pushed me many years back. I was telling me, remember, very place that we were in my climate on that dance star place. And he gave me a catalog of people that were doing miracles with the uh, evil power of favor and whatever. And I said, the mandate God has given me is that he has not called me to judge anybody. That's unto his, he was shot by that answer. Because it was raging, well, I would have just stand on the grandstand and be saying, ah, they just, I don't know. God, we judge them. So don't, don't be part of that at all. Uh, people should not be part of that. I know you know. So that, that would be my answer to that, sir. I think that's all. Online. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Um, there are two questions online so far. Um, the first one, uh, I'll just read it verbatim. him. says, thank you for the teaching tonight, sir. I honor you. And the question is, is it possible for someone to be generous without being compassionate? Good question. Okay. <laughs> if I don't trust that, that's really for me. Okay. A few heads are shaking. <laughs> Is it, it's, fine, it's fine. That's why it's Bible study. I mean, we look at it from more dimensions. Is it possible to be generous without being compassionate? It's a good question, actually. Yes, it is. If you are doing it mainly for show off, eh, it's very possible. So, please, thank you very much for that question. Just avoid that. If you, if, if it's, you know, maybe it's, it's not driven by compassion. You are driven by personal aggrandizement. Let them see me. The result is also well marked out for people like that. So that's not the category we shall be in. Thanks for helping us to clarify that. That's fine. We appreciate that. Next question, sir. 
Thank you, sir. The second question, are we all blessed already, but to different levels? Is there a limit to Luke 6.30? More so when the affluent around are not as generous as less rich brethren. We will have Luke 6.30 on the screen, sir. Luke 6.30, uh, I don't know that. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. Okay? Uh, please help me relate that to the question. Yes, so the question is, uh, well, there are two, two questions in one. Are we all blessed already, but to different levels? And then the second part is, is there a limit to Luke 6.30? More so when the affluent around are not as generous as less okay. rich brethren. Okay, okay. Are we all blessed already? I don't know. Yes. Um, I mean, but, but what we are talking about? We are talking about the level of being a blessing. Uh, if you uh, you practically move me to repreach the whole thing, we are all blessed. We are all blessed by health. We are all blessed by roof over our head, isn't it? And we are all blessed by food on our table. We never deny that. And I sincerely believe there's no catch in that question to say, why am I talking about blessing? Is it that we are ungrateful? If that is not there, I will be happy. If that is there, please perish their thoughts. That's not what we are saying. But we are saying that there's a journey God is taking you. Go there. Don't settle for where you are. Don't hear any other thing tonight. If you are just settling for, uh, you know, uh, this is not okay. I hope that's not coming from the position of complacency. Which, which blessing again? Is it not okay? Well, anybody that wants to stay where they are, please, I beg you, don't stay there. God sent the word to you tonight specifically to move from where you are to where you should be. And that is to the place of being a blessing. That is what I will take away from the lesson tonight. And I will not dilute it under any condition by the Father. Oh, it's okay. Why are you talking about it? Either has that hair. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from you who takes away from your good, do not ask them back. Uh, why should we follow that, especially when people are side, they give you and they take back? Uh, I think you are taking us away from the study tonight. All right, see you fast. Any other question online? That's it, sir. That's it, okay, okay, thank you. Um, I don't know. Does anybody can connect that to the tonight's study? I just don't want to be too abrupt. I can't connect it. If I connect it for us, please. Yourself. Okay. Uh, please, please say it so that the person can hear that you have heard Thank it. You, her. I think, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> this is my, uh, but, but reading the verse, it says, give to everyone who asks of you and from you your goods, do not ask them back. Okay. There are limits to that. Mm. So you can go into the realm of, well, if you are giving, but when do you say it's enough? Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, I got that. So essentially, Pastor Femi, what is something about? Please go ahead. No, I, I, I think for, if I understand the question, can we be too generous? Can we be too generous? Which is almost the study, yeah. Um, huh? Okay. Mm. A limit to look three uh, six thirty. Okay. More so when the affluent around are not as generous okay. as less rich brethren. Is okay. this about the affluent not giving enough? That that's what the question seems to me. You think so? So the affluent are not giving enough. All right. So that's a very wonderful Bible study tonight so that we can discuss the whole question for this. <laughs> All right. Let, let's, let's peg it here. Let's peg it here. We've mentioned that there must be need for you to ask God to restrain you so that you don't give in such a way to harm your own self. Don't forget the same scripture tells us about the ten virgins. And it's not only applicable unto 
spiritual things, but all truths are parallel. There are times when you say, so that it will be enough for you and I go and get your own. All those are there, but don't muddy any study by, you know, we give room for question. Take your message home tonight. I've answered that question before, and this is me trying to peg everything so that we can move to the next thing now. That you need wisdom sometimes, if at all the time when you are giving, but if you have the right heart that is ready and willing to give all the time, thank God for that heart. Amen. That it will be well balanced for you and moderated for you, it will be. Bringing in outside that sin you don't give does not concern us. What concerns us is what we are doing in the household of faith. And that is what we shall follow. Everybody will have our own just reward for their labor. And we shall have a just one for ours as well. I think we should pray right now. Amen. Amen. There are other questions. The Holy Spirit, or you can ask me privately. Shall we please rise on our feet and pray? And then we'll move to the Holy Communion from there. Amen. Are you going on with something tonight? I pray you will be a blessing. You will not stop short of the plan of God for your life. You may not look it. You may not feel like it. To outside, you may not smell it, but you are it. Do you get that? Uh -huh. There's nothing small about you in Christ Jesus. He's working on your process, and you will get there. Filling the blanks for you, making up for all the weaknesses. And he that took our fathers of old, that he will take you there. Tonight, we'll go back to our original Bible passage, which is uh, Ezekiel chapter 34. Okay, 34, if you put verse 26 there, where we took our text tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ezekiel 34, please. Verse 26. That's Ezra. Ezekiel 34. Right. Ooh, should know it by heart now. Any crash in the computer? Okay, let somebody let me just, just don't want to paraphrase. I want us to uh, okay. Okay, is there now? Okay, I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing. I come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessing. Singular prayer, I will make them a blessing. We'll come back sometime. The Lord allows us to pray about the hills around them. But it is them that must be made a blessing. You will need to pray for yourself tonight. From questions, from suggestions, we are all different faces of getting there. And so, it's as far as you have gone that you will pray tonight. And it's with that same energy you will pray that you will be made a blessing. Amen. You will stand on the word of God and begin to pray and say, according to your word, Lord, you have promised that you will make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. Begin to pray. I pray. I can't say more than that for you. I've heard your word. I've sensed in the spirit that you are about to do something marvelous with my life that's supposed to be bigger and mightier and more impactful than this in my generation. We saw the likes of David in the generation, saw the likes of Joseph, and the ultimate example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Ah, you made him a blessing, and you are pointing unto us that after then came the apostles, after then came the deacons of old who went to Samaria and they were made tremendous blessings. After them, even at the time of our Lord, came Joseph of Arimathea, who was a blessing directly unto the Son of God. We're going to cry, cry to you tonight, Lord. Just make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' marvelous name, we are praying. On that only prayer point we are praying tonight, I want you to use this addition to it as a prayer aid. And that addition is that, Lord, you are proving yourself before. You said, I will make you fishers of men. And you made them. You can't fail. 
they were the most unlikely people who were to preach the gospel. That when they saw that they said they took knowledge, as for 13, that they were ignorant men, but they knew they'd been with Jesus. Lord, I may not look it. Peter did not look it. I may not sound like it. Peter did not sound like it. But your promise you fulfill. This word for this month is personal for me. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. You need to argue your own case with the Lord in the place of prayer. It's not a prayer that we just pray in the flesh. You need to believe it. You need to say, Lord, you said it before. And I know you will make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. That will affect my generation. That will affect my generation. Make me a blessing in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. For your word is true. Hallelujah. Pray a little bit more, brethren. Pray a little bit more. Because in a moment we will come to the table of the Lord and we shall seal these prayers in the place of you no know, communion with the Lord, in the place of eating with him. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Yes, pray a little bit more. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. He has never failed. Everything may not seem to be coming together, but please believe the Lord tonight. Say, believe God, believe his prophet, and you shall prosper. The word of the Lord has come unto us this season. To be made, and that gladdens the heart of God. When a man, when a person has been made to impart their generation, that's what I'm looking for. In spiritual, in material things, in intellect, in wisdom. Oh Lord, oh Lord, you did it for Peter. He was far out. He was far out. He was far out. He even denied you. He compounded his weakness with sin, but that did not stop you, Lord, to fulfill your promise over his life. He compounded his problem with talking too much. He broke every rule almost, but Lord, by your mercy, you still fulfill that I will make you. You have sent your word, not just a fountain of love, but you have sent your word unto me, not just unto the Christian church of God, all our churches in this area that you have been bringing together but you have said it to me, Chris Bailey, that I will make you a blessing. I receive that tonight, Lord, and I stand on your infallible word. You have a track record, oh God, that no matter how unlikely it may be, as long as you propose in your heart, you will make. Begin to fill in your own blank right now that you are sensing. Maybe make you a blessing in the area of finances. Make you a blessing in the area of your business. Make you a blessing in the area of the anointing to do my Mighty words for the Lord. Make you a blessing in the area of innovation and wisdom. Don't keep quiet. I'll wrestle with the Lord tonight and possess that which is yours. It's not a general word, it's a word for me. You say you will make me, oh Lord, my Father. I will never be a curse, but I will be a blessing. Whatever needs to shift, must shift. It might be for that miracle you have been waiting for the Lord for, that the Lord wants to use it to touch many lives all over the world. That supposed that delay in your life, that God wants to use to make you a blessing. Oh Lord, that healing that is pending that God wants to use. Lazarus was made a blessing simply by everybody coming not to see Jesus but to see the man that was raised up. And through him many believe Jesus. Lord might be a long term problem in our lives but you are here oh God our father to use it as a means of a blessing for my generation. Pray through tonight. God we made the heavens to be opened over us. Lord we make us to break through in the place of prayer tonight uh, and that long awaited uh, blessing that he has promised to make you alive that shall be certain tonight uh, begin to bring your prayer to the close in readiness to continue to pray it later in jesus uh, marvelous name we are praying uh, i'm sorry i have to stop you one of those prayers that maybe one of these night vigils god will give us the time one hour you just settle with the lord but with that same grace, please live here and continue to war. Uh, I've given you sufficient you know, help here that the Holy Spirit will give you more. Ground to stand upon. You will break through, we shall break through. We, we shall not go around in circle anymore. And you will not suffer near success syndrome. 
you will not get to the brink and fail. There's a promise over your life and you will possess it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we were told in verse 25 of the 34th chapter of Ezekiel that I will make a covenant with them. And it's that covenant that we will reenact again tonight. I will make a covenant. He has made that covenant. But you will bring that covenant back to life. In that covenant there is peace. In that covenant there is restoration. In that covenant there is everything. Come to the table tonight and say this is all about the covenant. And there shall be a performance in the name of the Lord. Those that are serving, please come for Please quiet. Please just uh, let's continue to worship the Lord. Shall I 
For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. Now the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat the bread and be reassured that the covenant is standing in our lives. Hallelujah. Please prepare the cup. In the same manner, he also took the cup. Shall I wait for you? Are we ready? In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. These do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit. Let us drink and give thanks unto the Lord. Spend a moment or two, just commune with your Heavenly Father, the covenant cutter, the one that has given us his son, the perfect blood, and that covenant will work for me. It's on the basis of the covenant that he said there will be showers of blessing. Thank you, Father Lord. Begin to bring your prayer to a close. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, humbly we bow tonight, submitting ourselves under you. We have said there's a covenant of peace. I pray that all around us, let there be calmness. Let every troubled water be still. And I pray, Lord, that the heavens indeed will open and our grants shall be soaked. This is our heart cry, Lord. In all humility, we receive of you the fullness of the body and the blood of the Lamb. And we trust that this shall work perfectly for every one of us. Thank you once again, Father. Jesus, most wonderful name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Somebody make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Give a clap of it. Thank him. Shout of victors. Glory. Hallelujah. Give him honor. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Amen. Please let's give our offering and just worship the Lord with dancing, with rejoicing for the marvelous things that he has done for us tonight. Things are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Abraham's blessings are mine. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey,
Abraham's blessing. Abraham's blessings are Oh, hallelujah. Abraham's blessings are I am blessed. I am blessed. I am made a blessing. Blessed. Oh, yeah. Abraham's blessings are Father, I accept of us that which we have brought. Amen. Breathe upon it. May there be no lack in our lives. Amen. May there be no lack in our homes. Amen. Make us a blessing indeed. As we go from here, go ahead of us, Lord. Give us a safe journey home. Give us sweet night sleep tonight. And please, wake every one of us up in the morning hale and hearty. We pray, if peradventure you come in the hours of the night, please, the great hope of our lives, let none be left behind. Amen. Thank you once again, Father. To you be the honor and glory. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Uh, one announcement, African Women Health Talk, Saturday 13th, which is two, three days time, is at Fountain House. As, um, time is nine in the mornings for about three hours or so. It's planned to be exceedingly wonderful. I'm quite aware of those who are coming to anchor it and you will be blessed. Please, women, you are really, really invited and the Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace in fellowship as we go. Want to go? May the grace. Amen. Shall we all please wait for one another and say surely very well and energetically want to go? Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. God bless you.